For this video, we're going to look at chats, conversations, and collaborative working in Microsoft Teams. If we go into Teams, and we can see we're in the Woodside Primary SLT team and the General tab, you'll notice there are some conversations playing out here. Each one of these is a conversation, and we can immediately comment on that conversation by clicking the reply button. It's worth bearing in mind that if you want to reply to a conversation, you click on the reply button that's underneath the conversation. Sometimes when you're on this conversation, which always ends up at the bottom, which is the most recent one, people tend to click in that box. And what that does is start a new conversation, which we'll look at in a second. And they think that they're replying to this one here. So always be aware that you need to click on the reply button so you actually reply to the conversation and not start a new one. So we'll have a look at this and you'll see there's some training feedback. Someone's put a document in. We'll look at this document in a second. Um, you'll see that there's a meeting scheduled there. And there's a message to say that the car park will be out of use on Wednesday due to building work. We can reply to a conversation. So, so let us reply to the conversation about the meeting uh, and we can just click on reply and type in a message. Type the message. You can either click on the little, what looks like a paper plane uh, to send the message or you can click enter. And you'll see it now appears and any users that are in that conversation will get a message in their activity window to say that someone has replied to this conversation. If we want to start a new conversation, we can click in the box at the bottom and simply type in a new message. Again, I can either click on the little paper aeroplane icon or press enter and send that message. Now anyone who's a member of this group will get a notification in their activity to say that there's a new conversation playing out. Whether we reply to a conversation or create a new one, we can also edit them if we find that we've made a little typo or we want to add something to it. If you click on the three little dots next to the message, you can go on edit and simply make any changes you want and click send again. You can also click on those three little dots and delete the message if you want. When you do delete the message, you'll see that this happens. It will say this message has been deleted and you have the option to undo deleting that message if you so desire and it will come back. Also, when we create new conversations or reply to conversations, we have some extra options open to us. We can just type, as you saw, but we also have the option to expand the compose box. If we click on that icon there, you'll see this gives us a few more options. We can add a subject, and then we can put our message in. You also get the option to attach a file, and you can attach the file from your computer, from your OneDrive account, or you can actually have files within Teams and attach them there. We can attach some emojis, or you can attach some stickers. Several options that just make it look a little bit more friendly, very useful when you, you, you bring children into Teams, but you can just brighten it up a bit and give everyone a bit of a smile on a Monday morning. This option here is for a meeting. So what you can do is set up a meeting now, as in a audio meeting or a video meeting. And if other people are online, they can come into that meeting uh, and join you and it's instantaneous. We can schedule a meeting and there is another video about scheduling meetings. But if you know there's a couple of people online and you want to chat straight away, rather than doing it in the chat window, you can do an audio or a video chat simply by clicking on there. So we'll add a little emoji and we'll send a message. Then everyone who's in that team will see that that's appeared in their activity window uh, and they can view it and they can reply to it as well. You may also want to highlight someone in a conversation. This is very useful because they will get a notification to say they've been mentioned and it will draw their attention to that conversation. So if we edit this one, 
to highlight someone in the conversation, press the at button and then start typing their email address. And you'll see that very quickly it will drill down to the person that you're looking for. You click on their name, you'll see it will go blue and highlighted. And then you can type a message, which everyone will see, but this will highlight to that person that they've been mentioned in this conversation. Click send. If we go up, you'll see that in this training feedback, there is an attached document. So what's happened here is DShock has written this message out and they've used the paperclip icon there to attach this document. This is where the power of teams and conversations really comes into play. It becomes a single pane of glass. So normally this would be sent via an email this document would be attached to the email and everyone would make their adjustments, send it back and then DShock has got the unenviable task of collating all those changes and putting them into a document which becomes the final draft. If you've been working very smart you may have this document on OneDrive or on a learning platform or a SharePoint site uh, and it becomes one place where people can edit the document and they're all editing the same document. However, you have to send this via an email. They then have to open Microsoft Word, make the changes, close Microsoft Word, come back to the emails. Maybe they want to ask a few questions, maybe they're unsure about something, and you're constantly flipping between email and Word to finish this document. What's happening with Teams is it brings all of this into one place. So you could see our message, which you could think of as an email, and you can see our attached document. When we click on the document, it will open up and we can view what it says. If we want to edit that document, we can simply click the edit button. And you'll see it will open up in a version of Word Online and we can make adjustments to this document. And the thing is, this document is a single truth. Anyone who comes in will be editing this document. You can have multiple people working on the same document at the same time. You can make any changes that you wanted to make to this document and you'll notice it will say at the top saving and then it will say saved. You can then close and anyone who comes back here will see that document with your changes made within it. What you can also do is because this conversation is playing out, if we go back into the document you'll see there is a chat icon at the top and that conversation can play out down the right hand side. This can be very powerful when multiple people are editing the same document at the same time. If you've got little questions, you could type them into the conversation and everything appears on one page. There's no sending emails, waiting for responses, opening Word, editing your document, you can all do it within one screen. And you'll see that the conversation here is exactly the same as the conversation there. A few other things we can do with chats. You see there's a little thumbs up icon there, which is a like this message. If you click on that, DShock will get an alert saying that you've liked that message. It can be a way of passing on thanks uh, or just kind of saying, yes, I've seen it, everything's fine. So these are conversations playing out in a team. What we can also do is have conversations between individuals or small groups. And for that, we have the chat icons. So as you can see here, there are two messages that are waiting for me that people have sent that only I or anyone else in that chat will have seen. So if we click on chat, first one pops up. You'll see I've sent a message there. Hi, Derek. I've just been made aware of this. And there is a damaged power socket on the back wall of the music room. They've responded saying, thank you for that. One other thing, do you have any idea when Alan will get the replacement? And just like we did with the conversations, we can simply type the message in there. And we can also click on the little expand compose box to give ourselves more options like bold, italic, underline. We can also attach documents or emojis and stickers. 
We can also schedule a meeting directly from this chat. As I say, there's another video on scheduling meetings. For now, that's all we need to do, so click send. And the next time Derek logs on, he will get a chat window saying that I've responded to that. You can also click on this one. Popped into your room yesterday to return the iPad charger I borrowed. She went there. I popped them in the cupboard next to your desk. I can thank them for that by either putting the thumbs up or just typing A. Thank you. And we'll pop a little sticker in. If you want to start a new chat, you can click on the new chat icon at the top. And just like you did when you highlighted the name of someone within a conversation, you don't have to press the at button this time. You can just start typing the name in. And then start typing the message. If you want to send a message to more than one person, you can click on the new chat, start typing in their email address and their names will appear. And then you can just add others to the list. At the moment, you can add up to 80 people to a single chat. Then when you type the message, and that will go to all those recipients and any of those respond and it will come back to everyone as well. So there's a brief overview of chats, conversations and collaborative working in Teams.